Hey Rad Reelers, JC here with Rad Reeling Fishing. In this episode two of Off the Reel, I'm going to be getting ready to do some kayak fishing with my buddy Otis. Make sure you tune in for the next video because we tore up the fish, you guys. Anyway, in the previous episode of Off the Reel, I showed you guys how to broken gooseneck and also a broken GoPro Hero 5. I contacted both of those companies. They are sending me new products. Well, almost said no questions asked. Oh yeah, they asked me some questions, but free of charge, you guys. I don't have to pay for shipping or anything. Way cool. It's good to work with reputable companies. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode two of Off The Reel. It's got some good tips in here for fishing, so let's do it. It's time to strip some line off of my reel. This has already been put on one way and then put on the other way. Probably just tie me a granny knot because that's my favorite kind of knot to tie. Just going to open the bale on my reel, set that down on the floor, pull the trigger. Screwdriver there line goes on there and I usually will take the braided line and I'll wrap it all the way around one time like that yeah you wrap that line around your hand like that and it'll create really good tension for putting the braid on you want your braided line to go on your reel nice and tight I bought these guys and the hooks got all rusted these are Johnson Sprite spoons. I'm gonna need these tomorrow. Text Otis. What do you want to say? Hey, dude, take one of those Johnson Sprite spoons and put it on your finger. Take a picture of it and send it to me so I can tell how big those spoons are. I gotta run up and get me some hooks because I am out of VMC treble hooks. So if you're new to this channel, off the reel this playlist is actually what it is it means just off the reel we're not fishing today we're actually getting ready to go fishing tomorrow i'm gonna have to get up at like four o'clock in the morning uh i've got an hour's drive to go fishing where i want to go tomorrow so yeah i'm gonna have to get up early but we're gonna make a run here i gotta replace those treble hooks i don't have any more treble hooks i'm all out and we got to get those spoons rigged up with some swivels so they don't get the line all twisted. We're getting all ready to go do some fishing. I'm going to an area tomorrow that I've never been to before. So hopefully we'll catch some fish and I'll be able to make a video. All right guys, here's something for you. There's one thing that I've never done on this channel that other popular YouTubers do. What is it? All right, my buddy texted me, and yeah, it looks like it's about two inches. I tell you what I've been thinking about doing. I made a video one time of like, I don't know, something like five things I never buy from for fishing in salt water. And so what I've been thinking about doing is actually doing a video and go buy some of those things that I said I would never buy, and then go out fishing with them and just see what kind of results I would get fishing with those things that I said I would never use for fishing. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think about that. I think that would be a fun video just to see what we get. I, You know, with my luck, I'd probably get out there and wreck some giant bull redfish or something on these rigs that I said I would never use. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think about that. I'm going to Walmart. My nice girlfriend used to call it Freak Mart. Freak Mart. Gala apples, my favorite. Now guys, don't get the wrong idea here. Johnson Sprite, 556. All the fishing rods are gone from Walmart. They're all gone. And look, the reels. Like all the reels are gone too. I just asked the sales associate. He said all this stuff has come from China and their suppliers are running out of stuff. And uh, yeah, so if you want to get a rod and reel from Walmart, you better hurry because everybody's spending their stimulus money. Ain't going to be nothing left. And we need some swivels. Small swivels. Little barrel swivels. That'll do. Look, guys, all the fishing line is wiped out, too. All of it. All right, guys, we're going to have to go ahead and get some of this stuff now. All the stuff I said I'd never fish with because if I don't get it now, they're going to be out of it. So this is one of the things that I said I would never fish with was this kind of leader. So... We're gonna go ahead and get, let's get the big one. Look at this, crab bait, chicken mix. What is this, cut squid? These guys, tell you what, let's get some, uh, let's get some, let's get some nasty dried cigar minnows. 
we'll cut those up and use them for bait. When people are rigged up with this kind of rig, they got some big old long shank hooks. So we're gonna put a big old long shank hook on there. Yeah, need one of those too. Let's get out of here. All right, man, here we go. Dick Sporting Goods, here we come. Look, here's size six right here. Dude, those look small. Yeah, they're saying, having the same problem at Dick's Sporting Goods. Look at all the floor carbon that's missing. Look at all that. A lot of empty racks, man. A lot of stuff coming from China. Oh, look, guys. Here's here's a uh, here's a prime example of what I'm talking about all the time. Forty-four, forty-five dollars for Power Pro line, fifty-pound test, three hundred yards. I get 500 yards of 50 pound test for like $14. So you guys do the math. I think I'm saving like, I don't know, a lot of money. I catch the heck out of fish on cheap braided line, y'all. Y'all know it. Just look through my library. I'm catching all kinds of big fish on cheap braided line. $44 for 300 yards of cotton. Cotton string, hello. Y'all just keep throwing your money away, though. I understand every fisherman has what he likes to fish with, right? I swear, the city I live in has so much traffic, man. I ain't stopping. There ain't no way. All right. One man's junk is another man's treasure, right? That's what they say. Let's go see if we got any treasures today. Oh, look at here. Tackle box. Old tackle box. That thing is ancient. Seven dollars. Usually they have a bin full of fishing rods around here. Look at this. What is this dude? A buck ninety-nine? Are you kidding? Twelve feet long. Two bucks. I got me a poor man's drone. Heck yeah! What the heck is that thing? <laughs> Your money's always looking for a place to go. All right. Back at the homestead. Hey, look at there. I bet we got the gooseneck. This thing. All right, let's see what we got in there. You kids living at home, don't drink out of the jug. I'm single, nobody else lives here but me. Replacement gooseneck, they replaced it. Totally awesome. Yeah, baby. Got me the brand new goose deck. Yeah, eight months, guys. No questions asked. I mean, all they wanted me to do is just send them a picture of the damage, and uh, they sent me a new one. I'll put a link in the description area for you guys who are photographers out there. Look, you see this clamp? This clamp clamps onto anything and everything. We'll just clamp it onto there. Nice. Told y'all we're going to have the poor man's drone. Watch this. You're going out. You're going out. Going out. That's the world's largest selfie stick. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, baby. Check it out. Drone footage coming in. Coming in hot. I know you're wondering what the vinegar is for, right? We're gonna put a little bit in there. So the other day, you guys, I forgot to rinse off my needle nose pliers. My buck 87 pliers, I can't even get them open. A little bit of vinegar, I think is gonna take care of that problem. We're just gonna put them in there and let them soak for a little while. We'll see what happens. Always save your broken lures for parts and pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I bought these Johnson Sprite spoons, but if these don't get rigged up with some type of a swivel in the front, they're gonna be spinning and they're just gonna twist the line up and it's gonna be a mess. So what I did, when I was at Walmart, I bought these small barrel swivels now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the split rings off of these old lures, and with the split ring, I'm gonna attach the swivel to the front of the Johnson spoon. When it comes to fishing, this little project that I'm getting to do, getting ready to do right here, is one that I don't really enjoy. This is your behind the scenes look at something Rad Reeling just does not enjoy doing. We got our switching out split rings without split ring pliers is really a pain, very difficult to do, but it can be done. Oh, you know what? I can get that off of there really easy. I got a better idea. Hold on. Yeah, baby. 
we got some dikes, dikes, dikes. That'll take care of it. I'm just going to cut the wire on the lure. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That thing will come right off of there. Since I hate doing split rings. There. There's one. Oh, you know what? I could probably just cut the hook, too. It's made my life a whole lot easier for getting split rings off. There we go. One split ring. Off. That's an easy way to get them off of there. Let's see if we can get this one off the same way. Let's give that hook a cut. Yep. Okay. Now we'll cut the wire on the lure. Give that guy a bend. There we go. Two split rings. I think get a split ring off of the front lip area. Should be able to just pull that thing completely out like that. Let's pull it out of the plastic. I think. Yeah, there we go. Another split ring. All right. There we go. We got it split with the pliers. Should be able to slide the swivel on there. Once you get it started on the wire, and I should be able to just spin the split ring with my fingers. One split ring on the, on the swivel. Definitely, if I had to say there is one thing that I don't enjoy doing, it is definitely doing split rings. Now that bad boy can just spin around on that barrel swivel like that, and I won't have to worry about my line getting tangled up. There they are. New hooks on the old ones, and then split rings and swivels on all of them. Nice. So these have been there about an hour. I would normally leave them in about an hour and a half, but I could hardly even open. I mean, I couldn't even budge them before. So let's see there. Yeah, look, they're already starting to loosen up a little bit. Let me see. I keep working them. A little, little more vinegar in there. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Vinegar, baby. Vinegar will cut right through rust, I'm telling you. Nothing to it. Oh, look. Look at how free those are now. I couldn't even open them before. Woo! Now I can take some steel wool to that. I'll show you, look. A wire brush and scrub on that. And take all that rust right off of there. But look, they are back to being brand new. Heck yeah, my buck 87 pliers. Woo, baby. Free as a bird now. If I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? I must be traveling on now. Too many places I got to see. All right, so I'm still getting ready to go fishing tomorrow. And my cast net, both of my cast nets are having issues. The, uh, the, the mono lines, one of these mono lines broke on this cast net. And you can see how it's got a droopy spot right here. I need to get another mono line on this thing. And so what I'm going to do is while this thing is just hanging down, I'm going to just go ahead and mark it. Just mark it with a Sharpie pen so I'll know where to tie the line on. Mark it right there. There we go. Now I know where to tie the line on. The equivalent line is about 60 pound test. I'm just going to pull off a long length of this 60 pound test here. Cut it off with my trusty blade. I should be able to look at this part on the cast net and figure out where it goes through because each one of these has two lines running through it. This one right here, it only has one line. So that's where I need to run the line through. I'm going to go ahead and run it through there. I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to bring it up here and I'm just going to tie it off to the swivel like I did the other one. You can use whatever kind of knot you want to use. I'm just going to use an improved clinch knot to do that with. I'm going to cut off the excess. I've got that fed through there. My next step is going to be to run the line through this section. And I'm going to just reach up inside the net. I'm going to find that, that tag end. Make sure I get the right one. There's a bunch of lines in there. I got the line. Now that I got the line, what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna pull the net up tight. I'm gonna pull it up tight like that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna squeeze this guy in the middle. I'm squeezing it tight here. Now I've got the length. Oh, I hold that up. Now I've got the length that, that, that needs to be tied off right there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna bend that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a permanent marker. All right, so that's the length. That's where I need my knot to tie off to the bottom of the cast nut. I've got my permanent mark on the rope where I want to tie it, and I have my permanent marker on the monofilament where the knot needs to be tied. Now I'm just going to do I'm just going to do do the deed here. Pull that up really good and tight. Make sure that's good and secure. And we're going to take this tag in. We're going to cut this tag end off really close. My final step here is just I'm going to burn that monofilament end so it's not like really really super pointy. There we go. Just smash that down like that. There we go. Now it won't get hung up on the net. There we go. No, no droopy. See there's no droopy lead lines now. They're all pulled up. So that'll stop those minnows from escaping. So I've got some other issues on this cast net here around this edge right here. See how that's torn? So basically now I just got to take time to, to wrap all that up with monofilament or braid, probably some braided line. Just take some braided line. I'm just going to tie all that netting around to the bottom. You know, when you're a fisherman, you got to do this kind of stuff. But basically, I have about a three and a half inch long needle here, and we're just going to put it through the net, get it up there, pull it through. I'm just going to get a certain amount of braid off of here and then I'm just going to tie it off for the first first start here go down here in each one of these squares and I'm just going to do a hitch knot I would say like a hitch knot and bring it through a couple times one hole repaired nice this is a nylon net. I do not like monofilament nets. Those things, you get them hung on the rocks and you just barely pull them. And they just rip all the shreds. Oh, there's another hole right there. I need to fix that one. I'm just going to go all the way through the net here and see if I got more holes to fix. There he is right there. Got him. Got him. Oh, it's a good one, man. Good snook. I sight cast him, oh my god. Holy crap. Boy, that is a beast. I got the hookup, I got it all, bro. Fish on. Boy, they love this mirror lure. Oh, he's on it, there he is, come on. Dude, that's a good fish. A little booze sucker. Dude, he's got to be like eight inches long. I think he's smaller than the lure. Look at that. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> nice. 